Hi guys and welcome to another beer log. Today I am in a very, very exciting place. Some of you may have already worked out where I am. I am in the Fuja room at Verhage. Now Verhage means nothing to you, Duchesse de Bourgogne might. Uh, so this is a Flemish red, which is a very particular style. Um, pretty much not really seen outside of Flanders in Belgium until very recently. And obviously they're not really a Flanders red, but more to do with wherever it's made. Um, what it is, is it's a red ale, a Belgian style red ale, a mixed fermentation red ale. So they barrel age it in these fucking great things, uh, which are red wine foudres from Bordeaux in France. Uh, they're used to make wine for about eight years. Uh, and then they sit in here, uh, aging away beer for uh, about a hundred years. So these are obviously, you can tell, it's like an Ikea finish to them, they're pretty new. Um, what happens is, so you've got, your, you've got your caramel and your slightly roasty notes from your red ale, uh, and then it's sent into one of these bad boys, where it goes sour, thanks to a collection of bacteria and yeast, uh, Britonomyces, uh, Pediococcus, and particularly Lactobacillus, which uh, does the main work for turning it sour, lowering the pH. Um, and it becomes either Roger Protz or Roger Protz, maybe Michael Jackson said that it's, it's kind of where beer, cider and wine meet. So you get the acidity of, say, a white wine, you get some of the depth of the red wine, it's a red wine cask, remember? Um, but then you get that kind of Brett farmyard stuff with the cider and that little sweet kind of tang that's in the sweeter ciders. Uh, and then you get the caramel and the oak and the roast, which is much more to do with the beer. So it's a very, very complex, deep beer um, that has also, along with all of those vibes, loads of cherry and balsamic. And more oak than I remember as well. So there's two very famous varieties of this. There's Roddenbach Grand Cru and there's Duchesse de Bourgogne. Um, Duchesse, I think, is a little bit sweeter, a little bit rounder. Um, it's got a bit, a bit more oak to it, I think, as well. Uh, I think it's sort of a little bit more spiky than rum, but less sour. Uh, for me, it's probably my favourite. Uh, and coming here and drinking it amongst the wood where it's been ageing uh, and blended is, is pretty humbling. Humbling is a strong word, but it is pretty humbling. I mean, this brewery, the history it's been through, I won't go into it, but it has it's seen a lot of world wars, it's brewed a lot of different beers, um, but the Vichtinar, which is the sort of the, the non Grand Cru version of this, uh, was first brewed way, way back in the 18th, 18th, maybe 19th century, a um, long time ago. Uh, but anyway, if you haven't tried a Flemish Red, go out and find your local variety, uh, or find one of the Belgians, or Vinna, new microbrewery, newish, make a fantastic version as well, it's oaky as fuck. Uh, so that's worth tracking down as well. Uh, I'm doing a tour of loads of microbrews at the moment on my way to Tour de Gers with a bunch of friends. So there's lots more content coming. Uh, we've done a film at the Dollar. Uh, we'll be doing some stuff at Delicene and obviously all the landmarks that we're visiting. So watch out for those soon. Cheers.